It's preparing the live stream. Preparing the live stream. All right, everyone, we are live. Welcome to Lifestyle by Tanisha, my channel. My name is Tanisha Burke. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified of any upcoming videos that I release. And if you are returning, welcome back. Happy to have all of you. My channel is about inspiring you to live your best life through entrepreneurship, specifically network marketing. I was able to create a six-figure uh, residual income in my current opportunity, and I am always looking to inspire and help people to be their best in their network marketing. So what we're doing today is our virtual coffee break with Tanisha live. We do this live every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And I am joined by my team of champions with me here on Zoom. And I see there's some people in the chat on YouTube as well. And I'm going to go around and have everyone introduce themselves. I want you to all state your first and last name, your city and state, and how long have you been in network marketing? So we're going to start off with Miss Shirley. Good morning or good afternoon from across Hello. the pond. <laughs> yeah, it's afternoon for me. Um, I'm Shirley Snelson and I'm from Manchester in the UK. Awesome. And how long have you been in network marketing? Uh, just over a year. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great afternoon, Devoris. One. Hello, hello. My name is Devoris. I currently reside in Long Beach, California, and I have been um, with network marketing almost three and a half years, almost four years. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Alicia, great afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Bergman. I currently reside in Valdosta, Georgia, and I've been with network marketing for four years. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Cassandra. Hi, everyone. My name is Cassandra Clay. I'm from Snellville, Georgia, I'm just outside of Atlanta. And um, I've been in the business for two and a half years, three, three years to be made. Awesome. Awesome. Miss Tanya, great afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanya Lapsley Cockett. I've been in the business uh, since May 18th of 2018, and I live in Newburgh, New York. Excellent. And Ms. Shamika Long. I am Shamika Long. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and then I've been in network marketing for two years. Excellent. 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 Well, thank you all for joining us today. I see we have Louise Washington uh, checking in and we also have Vera. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. So today's topic is the management trap. Oh my goodness, the management trap. If you have been in network marketing for a minimum of 12 months, you have probably experienced the management trap. So what is the management trap? To me, the management trap is when you spend your time doing things that are holding you back from building your business, right? It's, it's those administrative tasks. It's everything other than the income producing activities. If you're spending too much time doing stuff other than the income producing activities, you are stuck in the management trap. So who here feels that they've experienced the management trap? Has anyone experienced the management trap? Alicia, go ahead and, sh and share with us, when have you experienced the management trap? I would say I experienced it the first maybe two years of the business. Um, I was so consumed working on a regular nine to five, then coming home, working in my house. So this is all before you know I had my daughter. So I was like, not really into network marketing because I was like, I just work nine to 10 hours. I'm not going to go home and do that. So I think I did this mostly within the first two years. Okay. All right. Anybody else 
experience the management trap? Shamika, you want to talk about that? Um, definitely experience the management trap. I would say, um, like within my first year, um, I would say that I found myself wanting it more for other people than they wanted it for themselves. <laughs> um, and while we like to say that um, you're not in business by yourself, um, you still need to do your own research and educate your own self on your own business. So um, I just had to kind of get over myself and just run with the runners and walk with the walkers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to give the top five uh, management trap issues. And then as, as I re read each one, I want us to kind of talk about it, okay? So the first one, the one of the top five management traps, not nipping it in the bud. Rarely does an issue resolve itself. When you see something or someone slipping, it is important to deal with it as soon as you observe a problem. Address it calmly, directly and with a helpful intent. Remember, everything duplicates good and bad. Who wants to speak on that? Oh my goodness, that is a good one. I know definitely for sure, you know, if you see an issue, you definitely want to address it right away, right? Because if you don't, it becomes a cancer. And that could be just someone, maybe you have a messenger chat with your team in it. And maybe, you know, someone doesn't like something someone says and they call them out in the chat and then they're going back and forth. That's a cancer. That is something you want to nip in the bud because now you have new business partners there and they're like, hold on, what, what did I sign up for? What is, what is going on? You know, it's not professional. So when you see something bad or negative or whatever, you have to nip it in the bud because if you don't, it is a cancer that will continue to spread. Tanya, you wanted to speak on that? Yeah, um, I recall a time when um, when I have been actually pulling my teammates along, um, whereas um, I post in my chat in the mornings and I get no responses back. Then I find myself reaching out to them on a uh, text message, no response back. Then I find myself calling them, no response back. And what I learned was that I was in the management trap. I was actually trying to pull them along in order to get them active in the business. And that's the worst thing in the world that you can actually do. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's true. Who else wants to speak on nipping it in the bud? Um, I would say that if you don't nip it in the bud, in the bud in the very beginning um that person would just continuously do do it whatever it is that you don't like they're gonna continue to do it continue to do it and as they continue to do it it's gonna become a habit and it could rub off on you <laughs> and it could just be all bad so i would say as soon as that thing happens address it and you know move on exactly exactly let me go over to our youtube chat Vera says the management trap gives the feel of corporate America or that nine to five. That's so true. Louise said, yes, I have experienced the management trap. It made me feel like I was working a job rather than being in business for myself. That is so true. Vera also says, I have experienced the management trap. Matter of fact, I'm feeling it as though I have been in it for the past month with my team. I'm coming out of it right now. That is awesome. Uh, Louise says it's pulling dead weight and it causes decay and depression. That's true. And Vera says it slows you down completely. I agree. Welcome, Brenda. I agree. So let's go on to number two. Squelching the flow of bad news. Good goes down, bad goes up. Negative talk about other business partners, leaders, or policies should never be... Uh, discussed with your downline. Keep the energy on your team positive and focused. If you must vent due to frustration, do so with your upline coach or mentor. They will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. 
Oh my goodness. Good goes down, bad goes up. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you have heard the leadership or even just another team member speak negatively about another team member or a leader? How did that make you feel? Who wants to talk about that? Cassandra? Oh, we can hardly hear you, Cassandra. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I've experienced that on my team within my organization. And um, it really makes you feel very bad because I said to myself, if you'll do that to them, you'll do it to me. And so um, I just kind of pull away. I don't, I'm one of those who would just read the chat to see what's going on. If I need to reply, I will. But further than that, I don't, I don't engage in anything else. So, um, but yeah, it can really pull your spirit down where you don't want to do anything because I'm like, what's going on? I didn't join this for this. So I just kind of pull myself back and pull it away, but I keep my eyes open because like I said, if you did it to them, you'll do it to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who else has experienced this and how did it make you feel? Tanya? I remember recently um, I had to um, actually reach out to a couple of my sideline partners because one of my teammates had overheard some negative activity um, about one of the directors on one of our training calls. And she was very, very upset. And she was to the point of tears. And I reached out to um, one of my sideline partners and had had a conversation of what should I say to this child? Because I didn't know what to say to her to get her back motivated. Mm -hmm. And my sideline partner was able to actually um, coach me into a good response um, for my team partner. So um, it, it really, really can bring down the team. It really can. It will kill morale. And if you have poor morale on your team, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of people leaving a whole bunch of people leaving. A lot of people are feeling depressed on their jobs and then to come and have to feel depressed on their business, their home-based business, not a good look, not a good look. So you definitely want to keep that morale up. Who else has experienced this and wants to share how it made them feel? Well, I'm glad most of you have not experienced it. That's a good thing, right? So here's the thing. If you catch someone or overhear someone speaking negatively about another business partner or, or um, you know, a leader or a policy or something, you want to address it right then and there. Number one, most I can tell you, especially like in our organization, we are all here to help you, right? Everybody wants everybody to win. And I promise you, Without a doubt, I can tell you that the leaders, the business partners, they never, ever want to do anything that's going to make you feel unmotivated about your business, right? We have a vested interest in your success. And sometimes people get caught up and they don't even realize that they're doing it, that they're putting out that negative energy. And so you want to bring it to their attention because how are they going to correct it if they don't know? Would you agree with that, Miss Brenda? Right? We need to let people know if they're doing something wrong, that's part of developing. That's part of our responsibility as leaders is to coach, train, and develop. And we have to be willing to have those hard conversations. So a lot of times when people come to me and we have one-on-one coachings and you know they're venting about another person, I always encourage them, did you go and speak to that person? Have you had this conversation with them? And a lot of times they have it. And that's a problem because how is that person supposed to fix the problem if they don't know that they're creating the problem, right? And so how do you do that? You have to be willing to have the hard conversations and you want to come from a place of love. That is the biggest thing. You don't want to go attacking people. Well, you did this and you said this. No, 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 no. You want to come from a place of love and always assume that they don't realize that they're putting out that negative energy. Say, listen, I'm not sure. I know that, you know, you love to help people and, you know, you want us all to win. However, you said when you said such and such and such, it made me feel 
right? Or it came off as, right? Let them know what they did so that they can correct that behavior. But you never just want to talk about it to everybody else and not address it with that person. Again, that becomes a cancer on your team. It's going to duplicate. And that person is going to continue to show bad behavior, maybe because they don't even realize that they're having that bad behavior. And then now their team is going to start to deteriorate because they're scaring everybody away. They're running everybody away. And you were in a position to do something about it, but you kept your mouth shut, right? So when you see something, you definitely wanna say something. Let me go over to our YouTube chat. Louise said, OMG, this is one of my biggest pet peeves that I've experienced. It's cancerous and hurts the team. It damages relationships and destroys trust. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Vera said, whoo, negativity has caused me to feel bad and questioning my decisions to be part of the team. Well, you should never let someone else's uh, bad behavior affect your business, right? Your business is, you are the CEO of your business. They are the CEOs of their business. But you want to be aware of these things that are happening so that you don't duplicate them on your team, right? Right. Louise said, trust is hard to get back. I addressed the issue with the person involved. You have to realize when it's time to move on, um, when it's time to move on, when, and stop being in an abusive relationship when you don't see a change. Very, very true. Nicole said, in a prior business, the leaders were in fighting to be on top and too many egos. There was bad leadership. Yeah, you got to be willing to trade that ego, that ego for equity, right? For the money. It, it's not about the egos. You can have the mic or you can have the money. Which one you want? <laughs> How many people want the money? <laughs> right? You can have the mic. And just like uh, Louise was saying, it's hard to build that trust back. And so when you bring something to another person's attention that they, you know, there was some bad behavior or something that they said was hurtful or whatever, it takes, they're going to respect you for sharing the information. They may not take it well. So I'm not, I can't, control how they take the information, but it's our responsibility to at least bring it to their attention. What they do with it from there is on them. But just so that you have a clean heart, you have a clean head, you always want to bring it to that person's attention in private. Y'all put an asterisk, <laughs> right, Brenda? They need to put an asterisk next to that. You want to bring it to their attention in private. No one wants to be called out in front of other people. No one wants to be called out in a chat or in a group or in a group text. Don't do that. Treat others the way you want to be treated. But the bad behavior must be addressed because if you do not address it, it will duplicate. Anybody want to speak on this? No. All right. Can you hear me? Who's that? Brenda, can you hear hey, me? Hey, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi. Yeah, it's important, you know, to speak to people individually. I do that with my children because I don't believe in embarrassing people. You have, and then you, you build a rapport with them and you pull in their coats and you're doing it in a loving manner. You know, you don't come at them aggressively. You come in a loving manner, explain to them, well, this wasn't right. What you said was wrong. And because see, I'm, I, I don't do that. Number one, I'm not going to, you're not going to talk to me about anyone else because I don't know them that well. And I'm not going to allow you to color my perception of people because I allow people to have, have, I, I like to have uh, my own adventure with people, you know, so I'm not going to allow you to tell me that this one is this and that. No, 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 no. We're not doing that one. And I will stop you at it. You know, Good. I will stop you immediately because I don't like that. You know? Excellent. So Excellent. Sisterhood. That's what's important. And I love this, you know, I'd rather be around people who are like-minded and kind, you know. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. And I love what you said, Brenda. The moment someone comes at you and it's, they come in with that gossip, you nip it in the bud. Like, nope, That's we're not it. doing that. I, I don't, I don't want to hear anything negative about somebody else. I'm trying to, you got to protect your peace too. You have to protect your peace and your energy. And so when someone comes around you with negative energy, do this. We're like, mm -mm, not, not today. We're, we're not doing that. 
right? And if you have a problem with so-and-so, you should be addressing it with them and not addressing it with me. Help that person grow and develop. By you telling me about it, that doesn't help them. That's just going to allow it to continue, right? So educate people. Some people, for, for a lot of people, this is their first time in network marketing. This is their first time being a CEO, a business owner. This is their first time leading a team, right? And so we want to help each other, right? Be your sister's keeper, be your brother's keeper and help them to grow, right? Because it's all about the big team and not just about us. Anybody else want to speak on this before we move on to the next management trap? And let me jump over to YouTube. Uh, Lenise said, if you feel negative, reach out to your upline leader to get positive direction. If you reach out to your downline, your energy will hurt them. That is so true. So true. So true. All right. So let's go on to the next one. Oh, I know this one. This one right here, I know we have all experienced it. Spending too much time on a problem child. Ooh, ooh, we're going to substitute child for business partner. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to read that again. Spending too much time on a problem child. Spending more and more time with an underperforming rep can lead to 80% of your time being taken away from building your business and neglecting the people on your team who are performing. If this continues long-term, your top producers will leave your team, decreasing levels of engagement and motivation for the rest of the team. Or some producers lower their productivity looking for attention. If an underperforming rep can't be brought up to speed, Due to them not plugging in and not being coachable, cut them loose. Your most valuable asset is your time, and that time should be invested in high return activities. Woo! We who wants to talk about spending too much time with the problem child? Go ahead, Tanya. Speaking from experience, <laughs> I, I have spent numerous, numerous hours on, like I said, tracking people down, um, begging them to get their business started, begging them to finish their training, begging them to attend the morning IMV, begging them to attend basic training. Just numerous, numerous hours of just running back and forth begging people to actually attend and be um, active within their business and to no, to no avail. Time was not well spent, was it? No, for sure. You didn't definitely. get anything out of it? Nope, definitely nothing not. Nothing changed? Nope, nothing has changed. Yep. <laughs> right. Why? Because these are adults and you can't make adults do things that they don't want to do. Right. Exactly. That's the bottom line. You cannot exactly. make a grown adult do something they don't want to do, right? If someone is struggling to feed their family and they don't make it a priority, there is absolutely nothing you can say that can make it a priority for them. Right. I always say, if your bank account doesn't motivate you to build your business, there's nothing I can say to change that. Right. right? Like Who else wants to speak on this? Who's experienced this management trap? Alicia? I want to speak on it because it kind of remind me of um, what John C. Maxwell was talking about in the 17 Indisputable Laws of Teamwork when he said the weakest link. You know, you can take the time to help them not become the weakest link, but if they don't take the time to accept it and try to grow from it, and yes, you have to move on because now that's bringing you down and that's bringing the rest of the team down. So now you got to try to get back to the rest of the team, to those who want to build and want to learn and want to grow. And it's not so much forget about them, but you just, like you said, you can't spend too much time on them because then you're, you're lacking where others need your help. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to meet people where they are when it comes to network marketing. Someone may come into business and because of, you know, what's going on in their life, they can only put 50% effort in it. Right. And if they're only going to put 50% in, then guess what? You're only going to put 50% in. Right. If they only want to put 10% in, guess how much you putting in? 
10%, right? If they all in and they're giving it 100%, guess what you're going to give them? 100%. And so if you match where they are, you'll never feel like you're being abused or wasting your time. You're giving what you're giving, right? You're giving what you're getting back from them. The other thing is you have to get people's buy-in when it comes to network marketing. You can't coach someone who hasn't agreed to be coached by you. Maybe they don't like you. <laughs> Maybe don't, they don't feel that you're a strong enough leader, right? So you have to continue to develop, but you have to get people's buy-in. And it, it, is an, it is an actual question. I know when I'm onboarding a new business partner, I manage their expectations of what I expect from them and what they're going to get from me. My role is to call the play. Your role is to run it, right? I'm never going to ask you to do anything that's illegal, immoral, or unethical. And if I ask you to do something, it's something that I'm already doing, or it's going to help you get to where you told me you wanted to be. Do you give me permission to coach you? Do you give me permission to develop you? Will you be coachable? And I, I wait for them to say, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now when I tell you get registered for convention, there should be no questions about that. They're just gonna do it, right? Now when I tell them I need them to plug into the team meeting and the corporate calls, there should be no question, they just do it, right? So you have to get people's buy-in and get their permission for you to even coach them. And then if you call a play and they don't run it, you stop talking. If I tell you to get on my calendar and set a date for your business launch and you don't do it, you're not going to hear from me. I'm not chasing you down to launch your business. That's your business. My business is growing. I'm trying to help you get a return of your investment, right? But sometimes we tend to, because we don't wanna see our numbers decline, we start spending a lot of time with people who are not investing their own time in the business. You can't invest more time into someone's business than they're willing to invest in their own business. That means they're, they're not making it a priority. So if it's not a priority for them, it shouldn't be a priority for you because the one thing for, sure, for certain, we all have 24 hours in a day. Does anybody else have 36 hours in a day? No, I didn't think so, right? We all have 24 hours in a day. And remember, as leaders, you're supposed to be growing your own business. You're not supposed to be managing the people in your downline. You're supposed to be focused on who's next. Who else can I help? Who's the next person that's going to join my organization? You have to continue to front line and grow wide, meaning personally enroll right? And then the people who raise their hand and say, hey, coach, I need help. Then you go help them. And once you finish helping them, you get back to frontlining, right? Hey, coach, I just signed a new business partner, right? You're going to work with them to help their new business partner. And then you go right back to frontlining. It is not for you to stop and say, well, who's not doing anything? Let me go motivate them. You cannot motivate anybody. What you can do is inspire Leaders don't motivate, they inspire. How do you inspire people? Throw points on the board. Model what it looks like. People can duplicate what they see, but if they don't see your numbers moving, they don't see you announcing new business partners, they don't see you on the calls and on the training, then they're gonna think, oh, okay, I don't need to do that. Right? Who wants to speak on this? I do. Cassandra? <laughs> oh. Um, I have, I have, um, with one of my business partners, I have done so, spent too much time, and I know that, and um, I'm like, I'm showing you everything that I do that works for me, I'm giving it to you, but you're not doing it, you know, I tell you, to, to, you need, why people don't see my post, because you ain't got no friends, so I tell them, you know, go out there and get you some more personal friends and then you invite them to your your, your, your travel page. But no matter what I say, just don't do it. But one thing about it, she plugs in. She, she be on every Zoom, every Zoom. 
or just not executing the information and giving. So I'm to, you know, we had a one-on-one last week and I'm like, you know, I don't know what else to do. You know, I've given you all the tools. I've given you the scripts that I use. Um, I've given you everything and you see me, you know, work in the business and you just not doing it. So I don't know what else to do to help you. And I said, to put it back in the lake plate, what can I do to help you? What do you need from me? I want, I want it. You ain't got no money. You know, you sit there and say, um, I, you go on credit hole. Okay, you need this. All you need is one to pay for your, your business. Mm-hmm. You ain't even got that yet. And so I'm like, all I'm doing is trying to get you to get your investment back and you see that this business. Oh, your voice, is- your sound is going low. I said, all I tell them is, you know, you need this business and, you know, I want you to see you get your investment back and let you know that this business is real. People are getting paid. I'm getting paid and I want to help you to get to where I'm, I am and beyond. Just not listening. Just not listening. So I'm just going to, oh. I just pull back. Right. And that's what you have to do. You have to leave the door open and say, listen. Clearly, you're not ready to win in your business. You haven't made a decision to win. You paid your money to get started, but you haven't made a decision to win. When you're ready to do the work, let me know. So you just kind of leave the door open and then you go and build your business and be the example for them. But you can't, the, the fact that the person is plugged in, they already know the value of what they have. If they're plugged in, they know the value. Right. So there's nothing more that you can do, Cassandra, except stop wasting your time talking to them until they show you action. Right. You don't give them your time. They have to show you action. I had one business partner um, who got on my calendar for one on one. Right. And, you know, they're like, "Okay, I'm ready to do this. I was like, "Okay," And I called the play. I said, I need you to go live. Just go live. Introduce yourself to your you know, your community, your social media community. And guess what? They didn't do it. And then they said, well, you know, I'm going to get on your calendar, you know, once a week. So we can, I said, no, 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 no. Until you run the last play that I called, you don't get my time. Right. So when you stop listening, I stop talking. Right. So how do you avoid spending too much time uh, with a problem child? If they don't run the plays that you call, stop calling plays with them and move on to the people who are running the plays. That's where you want to spend your time. When you see someone who has a spark, you go throw, you go throw gasoline on it, right? Go throw gasoline on the spark. You, if, if it's wet, you can't light it, <laughs> right? Shamika, you want to speak on this? Um, I was just going to say that it goes back to meeting people where they are. So if you're giving me 20 percent, I'm going to give you 20 percent. If, if I see you plugging in and you running and you're giving me 80 percent, I'm going to give you 80 percent. So um, I had to learn that the hard way because at first I found myself chasing people. And like I said, wanting it more for them than they wanted it for themselves. So um, you really just have to step back and understand, you know, some people may be going through stuff, you know, um, you just never know what some people may be going through. But um, if, if, like you said, if I call a play and you don't do it, then, hey, that's it. Then <laughs> I'm done with you. So I'm going to walk with the walkers and run with the runners. Exactly, exactly. Louise said, problem child, wasted energy that saps everything out of you. And now you're not giving the ones who are running what they need to be successful. Absolutely. Felicia said, that's a great point. Uh, Felicia said to Alicia, that's a great point. Yep, very true, very true. All right, let's go on to number four. Letting enthusiasm fizzle. You worked really hard and paid your prospect a lot of attention to get them in the business, but once they're in, you treat them like a number. Avoid this by creating a culture of recognition and show your team appreciation. Look for opportunities to celebrate and acknowledge them, even for the smallest things. You must continue 
to re-sign people emotionally. Ooh, ooh, who wants to talk about that? Go ahead, oh, Tanya. Oh. Tanya and then Alicia. Tanya, we can't hear you, you're on mute. Sorry about that. To keep my team motivated within my chat, I um, congratulate, I do a weekly um, um, team, um, what is it called? It's a weekly team post um, congratulating someone on the team. Like this past week, I congratulated Jody. Um, Jody came down to your house for ITQ. She's been she's been um, with Devaris and the rest for uh, Shelly's birthday in Vegas. And she's she's been really, really plugged in. She's brought in a bunch of business partners. So I actually congratulated her as the um, this week's team player. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Giving out team player awards. That's a great way to show recognition. Who else wants uh, Alicia? Oops, you're on mute. I got a feedback from one of my um, business partners because I acknowledge her for doing her first business partner. And she said that that made her feel special. That made her feel like that she's able to do this business. So if you're acknowledging your teammates for, you know, even like you say, the smallest things, then that helps push them a little bit further into the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. We are all in the travel industry. So reach out to your team and find out who's booked a trip recently. Right. And then give them a shout out, you know, in a team group for, you know, booking a trip. Maybe it's their first trip. Maybe they book, you know, any anything, whatever they've done. Maybe they've gotten a certification. Right. Shout them out for getting their certification. You know, they're registered for a convention. Shout them out for registering for a convention. Right. These are things. And, and what it does is it kind of ignites a fire under the rest of the team. The ones that aren't moving because they're like, wow. So-and-so just joined the business and already they booked their first trip. What are they doing that I'm not doing? Oh, that's right. I'm not doing anything. Let me start doing something, right? So it's the new blood in the business that's going to reignite um, the, the existing people. Um, but you got to have an attitude of gratitude and show recognition to keep that, that positive culture, that positive energy flowing. And it'll just duplicate it will just duplicate. It'll catch on like wildfire. Who else wants to speak on this? Lanise? I did. Hi. So I was um, thinking along that same line as well um, that you mentioned, like, even if it's not a leadership benchmark, because a lot of times what a person who has been in the business for a while, they may start to feel like um, everyone's advancing and nothing, nothing is working for me. But if they are also uh, acknowledged and recognized when they do certain activities or uh, maybe help someone out, or as you mentioned, the book, the book travel, or got a certification, that keeps them motivated to keep going too, even if they're not hitting certain leadership levels as quick as they thought they would. Absolutely, absolutely. Who else wants to speak on this? Uh, <clears throat> I think I think I kind of mimic what someone else said. I had someone that I just did a shout out yesterday for. She um, is in the business. She does book travel. She's not maybe as focused. I mean, not as visual, but she uh, had posted that she passed her license for um, becoming a real estate agent. And so I shot her out for that. And she was, you know, she appreciated it because, it, you know, it also acknowledging them, not just necessarily on what she's doing in the business, but just in her life. You know, absolutely. so that's still an accomplishment. And so she appreciated it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be business related, but if it, because we want to treat people as people and not as a number. So, you know, I know we've had people who became grandparents for the first time, right? We shout them out. Congratulations on your first grandchild. You know what I mean? Because you want to create, you have to understand some people join this, everybody joins the business for different reasons, especially network marketing, right? Some people join the business because they're trying to get out of their job. Some people join the business because they're trying to get out of debt. Some people join the business because they want to own a home. Some people join the business because they want to leave a legacy for their family. Other people join the business just because they want something social to do. And can I tell you, network marketing is hands down the best social club on the planet. Seriously, 
especially in the industry that we're in travel, oh my gosh, you know that there are some people who join our business because they're retired. They love to travel and they're like, well, I don't have anybody locally to travel with. Let me join this travel network marketing business and I'm gonna travel with my business partners. Yes, there's some people who do that just for that reason. So you want to make sure that you keep the culture fun, exciting, always moving forward. And that's, again, going back to the other management track, the moment you see negativity, you got to nip it in the bud. Like, no, 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 you can't mess up my positive vibe that I have going on my team. So you got to keep it positive. So I encourage all of you to every day, look for just one person that you can shout out for something that they've accomplished. One thing. It could even be just showing up on a team call. Shout them out, right? A lot of times when um, I'm on team calls or on the morning vitamin or whatever, I may say, who's on the IMV with me, right? And I get certain people say, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, right? And I give them a little heart, acknowledging that I see that you're on. And sometimes I may just comment, thank you for the accountability, right? People want to be acknowledged. Sometimes the acknowledgement that they get in their network marketing business is the only acknowledgement they get in life because they're not acknowledged on their job. They're, they don't get any acknowledgement at home. And sometimes they only get it in their business. And if they feel good about their business, they won't quit. You'll be able to retain them, right? So it's the environment. It's the culture that you create that is so important. I know there's, how many of you have maybe a restaurant that you go to and, or, or a store that you go to, or I say the restaurant because maybe the food isn't the best. It's okay. It's not the best you ever had, but it's the environment. It's the employees that just make it extra special. It's the bartender or the waiter that remembers your name and knows exactly what you want and how you like it. Even though the food, you could go someplace else and get better food, but you go there because of the service. You go there because of the way they make you feel. Can anybody relate to that? Anybody want to speak on that? People don't remember what you say, but they do remember how you feel, how you made them feel. My car dealership is a great example. Um, they, they, they give you excellent, excellent service. I pay to go directly to the Acura dealer when I know I can get my oil changed cheaper someplace else. But I go because of their customer service. Excellent, excellent. And I'm sure if all of you... Go ahead, Lenise. Sorry. Um, Tanya made me think of that too because um, I take both my vehicles 45 minutes from my house to get service because the, the service there is awesome. I never have any problems and they're very cordial, everybody in the building. And I know I can go five, 10 minutes away, but I just make a day out of it because of the way they make me feel at the end of the day. Exactly. Thank you so much for those examples. So people will remember how you make them feel and they will hang with you if you make them feel good. They will hang with you. When you, when you fighting for your next promotion, you within that 10 yard line, that 20 yard line, they will fight with you because you made them feel good when nobody else did, because you were that light, because you acknowledged them, because you, you saw, you showed them that they matter to you and that they are not just a number to you. So always remember that I want, I want, I encourage everyone every day, look for one person on your team that you can shout them out publicly. You can do it privately as well. There's some things you want to do privately, but also publicly, because that is going to ignite a fire under the rest of your team. All right, number five, the last one. Ooh, this is a good one. I had a hard time with this one, y'all. I really did. And I know I'm not the only one. Delegate. Delegate. You can't be the magic in your organization because you will eventually burn out. And if you burn out, who will steer the ship? As leaders, we should focus on developing the next leaders to take our place. Everyone has a special skill, 
find those people with those skills and allow them the opportunity to share it with the big team. Maybe they're good at creating flyers. I used to, I used to suck at flyers until I discovered Canva, y'all, right? But maybe they're good at flyers. So maybe they create the team flyers um, for you. Maybe they're good um, hosting an opportunity, right? They greet everyone, right? They're polite. Um, presentation, conducting a training, right? You may have someone on your team, maybe they've gotten a, cert a certification for Disney, right? So maybe you have them share some tips, maybe just even in a post about Disney, right? That the rest of us who have not done the Disney certification, something like that. Um, remember, it takes a village. Who wants to speak on this? Delegating, delegating. I'm going to speak on it first because I can tell you in all of my, even my jobs or whatever, I've always had that mentality. If I want it done right, I got to do it myself. Am I the only one that feels that? Hands, show hands. Anybody else have that, right? If I want it done right, I got to do it myself, right? But how many of you also say you want time freedom? Show of hands right? The same hands that said, if I want it done right, I'm going to do it myself are the same people who say they also want time freedom. Guess what? The two don't go together. Because if you have to do it all, when are you going to get that time freedom? Never, never. So what do we do? I know it's hard to let go of control. I'm a control freak. And I'll be the first to, even with my husband, y'all, I got to control everything. Right, but I gotta learn to let that go, Miss Brenda. I can't control everything and say I want time freedom. So identify the people who have special skills, evaluate those skills, and then put them to work. Why do I say evaluate the skills? Because you don't wanna push someone into a situation that they're not ready for, right? I'm not gonna, if I haven't heard someone do an edification, I'm not going to push them to open up a team meeting and then they butcher my edification <laughs> or someone else's edification, right? So if I see that they need help, I'm going to help them in that area. I'm going to train them. I'm going to work with them, get them up to speed, and then boom, put them out there. Okay, you're going to open up the team call tonight or you're going to open up the business opportunity tonight, right? So you have to identify those skills that people have and let them shine. Let them shine. And then the areas that they need personal development with, help them in those areas, help them develop. Maybe it's you recommend a book for them to read for personal development, right? Everyone should be reading a book. None of us are perfect. Every day we have to grow and learn. So everyone should be reading a book that's going to help them in a specific area that they need help in. I don't believe in reading a book just to be reading a book. I think everyone should be identifying their weaknesses and then finding the book that's going to help them make that weakness a strength. That's just how I am. That's, that's what I believe, right? Because we only have 24 hours in a day, right? Tanya, you wanna speak on this? So um, we just finished our book club um, yesterday morning, the 17 indisputable um, of teamwork. Mm -hmm. And I really, really loved this book. This book should be one of the first top three that we read once, once we come into the business. Um, what it did for me was it told me that I am a control freak, which I am. Um, <laughs> and um, what I did was I winded up calling uh, Jody and asking Jody to open up our monthly team meeting, um, do the edification for me for our monthly team meeting. I called my sponsor because I took the leadership role on actually um, getting our team together and actually um, doing the agendas every month and everything like that. But she is um, up for an ambassador of um, travel. So I told her that I wanted her next month to do the travel portion of the um, business. And last night, Natisha told me that she got certified for Disney. And I've had people reach out to me for Disney and I'm not certified for Disney. So I decided that uh, Natisha will be my Disney specialist that I give my travel to. So that, th that book has really, really broadened my horizon. It really has. Excellent, 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 excellent. Who else wants to speak on this? Delegating, delegating. 
Who else is a control freak? Where are my control freaks at? I want to hear from y'all. What are y'all doing to fix that? Tanya, I need that book title. <laughs> the 21. I need that book title. The 21. 17. 17. Indisputable Laws of Teamwork. Yes. I think I have that one. Yes. There you go. Yes. The 17 Indisputable Laws of Teamwork. You got to put that in the chat. chat, chat. It also has a workbook. Yes, and I hear right. the workbook is phenomenal. The workbook is awesome. Awesome. I have to awesome. learn how to work with a team. <laughs> I want those people who have done everything on my own, you know. So I really have to work on that. See, I'm I'm big on self development. You know, Good. it's about elevation. You know, so you have to develop yourself. No one will help you do that. You that's a self. That's an inside job. So Absolutely. anything that's going to help, and I always, I do a lot of self-evaluation and playing on a team is not one of my best, you know, because I've always been the boss, boss mm -hmm. the children, the husband, everything. <laughs> I have to learn how to do this. That's good, Brenda, that Thank you know you, that about Thank yourself. You, yeah, that's good, Brenda, that you know that about yourself, because then you can work on it. You know, you can work on it. And then you'll, when you can acknowledge that that's an issue, it makes you more aware. And so you'll catch yourself saying certain things. You'll be like, because mm. I know I do that with my husband all the time. So I, I know y'all sometimes I love my boo, but sometimes I know I treat him like a child. I found myself treating him like a child, like don't do this, do it this way. And I'm like, he a grown man. And you telling him what he, I be getting on him. Like, don't wear that. You should wear, he grown. <laughs> Am I the only one? Come on, y'all. This no, is you real talk. Like always, I'm always yeah. dressing my so <laughs> I'm, I'm always to develop them, right? out and cut the grass. I'm always, I'm always um, telling him what to do. So no, you're not the only one. <laughs> right. So sometimes we have to, even with our children, you know, some, we have to let them grow into who they're going to be and, and trust that we've instilled the right things in them. And it's the same thing with our team members, right? We have to coach, train and develop them. And if we model what it looks like, they won't forget it right? They'll, they'll realize what they're doing. And then when you kind of call them out on a little thing, say, yeah, do you, you know, is there a better, do you think that there's a better way you could have did that? Right. And let them think for themselves instead of you telling them you did that wrong. Right. I love to ask questions instead of giving the answer, ask questions, make them use their critical thinking skills, right? That is going to help develop them. Let me jump over to YouTube. I haven't jumped over here in a minute. Uh, Louise said, delegation, good info, evaluate their skills. Yes, evaluate their skills. Don't put somebody out there to fail. Don't set them up for failure. Don't do that, right? We want to make sure they're ready. Felicia said that the book is awesome. <laughs> and Louise said, no, I am not the only one. I'm not alone. <laughs> so I'm going to give you all, we got eight minutes. I'm going to give you all I know that there's been times that I've been stuck in the management trap and I'm going to give you the one tip that has helped me avoid being in the management trap. So if you're taking notes, get ready. The number one tip that I'm going to give you to avoid the management trap is get an online calendar. Get an online calendar. That's my husband. I, he's, I can't talk to you right now. I'm on live, right? Get an online calendar. Why do I say that? If you get an online calendar and you make it clear to your team that you have an online calendar, if they need you for three-way calls or one-on-one -on -one coaching, training or whatever, just book yourself on my calendar. Then you let your calendar dictate your activity. So now you're only spending time with the people who are raising their hand saying, hey, coach, I need help, as opposed to you chasing people down. Y'all get that? Get an online calendar. Now, there are online calendars that are free, and there are online calendars that you can pay for. One of the free ones that I used to use um, was youcanbook.me. Y-O-U. C-A-N, 
B O O K dot me. You can book dot me. They have a free online calendar. You could set up multiple types of meetings, but with the free version, you have to pick a specific time. So whether you're doing one hour blocks or 30 minute blocks or 45 minute blocks, all of the types will have to have the same blockage of time, but you can upgrade to their paid version. And now you can have different blocks of time. So maybe your three-way call is a 30 minute block. And then your one-on-one coaching is a one hour block. So the paid version allows you to have different blocks of time in the free version, you have to pick one specific block of time. That has been a game changer for me. And that has kept me out of the management trap. So that is my biggest tip for all of you. Um, And I don't care if you have a team of one, get you an online calendar for your team of one, right? And then that'll make it a lot easier as you As you do your orientation with your new business partners, let them be aware of your online calendar and how they can reach out to you for anything. And I always, you know, when I'm doing an orientation, let my new business partners know that, listen, I don't ever want you to think that I'm too busy to help you. It doesn't matter how big, I can have a team of 2,000 or 20,000. I'm never too busy to help you. And that is why I have an online calendar in place. So that when you need me, you can book time with me. And that time, that hour is just for you and what you need, right? So have that conversations with your downline. Who wants to speak on this? I um, I took that tip from you eons ago. <laughs> so I definitely um, use it. And my new people that I brought on, that I per- since I started the online calendar that I brought on, they definitely use it um, and, it, and it is helpful. You know, oh, I'm gonna get on your calendar. Well, let me check what you have available on your calendar. So it definitely does help them and it does let them know um, that I am available. Now, if they need something quick, they may shoot me a message, but for the most part, they definitely, anybody that's, that's newer on my team definitely uses my calendar. Awesome, awesome, great. Anybody else? I say that's good. Actually, I do have an online calendar, even though no one uses it, but um, it helps you identify the ones that really need the help and want the help. So that's a good idea. Yep. And so even with the ones that are not using it, like let's say, for example, Shamika, someone texts you for a three-way call. Say, please book it on my calendar. Don't respond and, and book the three-way call because they text you. You have to shift them over to the calendar. And, and it takes about a week, you know, a couple of weeks. But the first <clears throat> time you refer them back to your calendar, then they get it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, let me just book it on our calendar. Let me stop texting her. Because it's unproductive for you to have to keep responding back and forth to text messages. That is very unproductive. It's not a good use of your time right? You're responding back to them and then they're responding back to you and then, or you respond to them and then they're busy. So they don't get right back to you. Now you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, where they could have not texted you at all, booked a three-way call on your calendar, and then it's done, right? So you have to, when you first start a calendar, you have to, there's a, a transition process of pushing them back to your calendar and for them to stop messaging you or texting you. Anybody else want to speak on this? I needed to hear that because I did set up an online calendar, but I, I still get text messages. So to instead of responding, yes, I got you this I, for this time and date, to tell them to, yes, go ahead, book it on my calendar. I need to start that transition process. Yes, yes. Or else they will never transition. <laughs> And you'll have people texting you all the time, all the time. Anybody else want to speak on this? Uh, Devorah said, so true, but not all leaders see it this way when it comes to the calendar. Yeah, I know some of my leaders don't like the calendar. And that's fine. Listen, everybody's not going to follow your leadership. And you got to be okay with that. I'm, I'm offering a suggestion to help people manage their time better, but if they don't want to manage their time better, it doesn't matter to me. If they want to spend all day responding to text messages and that works for them, then that's fine. That's fine. But I'm sharing with you 
something that you can help even your downline with as they're personally developing? Because there's a lot of people who don't have those time management skills coming into the business. So when you hear people say, oh, I don't have a lot of time, and these are some tools that you can offer them that can help them with that, help them manage their time better. And having an, every, every successful person works from a calendar. Every successful business owner works from a calendar. They're not just doing anything. So if you allow your calendar to dictate your activity, then that will help you manage your time better. And it'll help you avoid wasting time on non-income producing activities. All right. All right, well, we are done with virtual coffee break with Tanisha live today. If you found this information helpful, please like this video, leave us a comment. Also, if you have any topics that you would like us to discuss on next week's uh, coffee break or any future coffee breaks, drop me a line, hit the like button, share, 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 subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you to all my teams of champions that are on with me today. I appreciate you as we share and help people. Remember, life is what we have, but lifestyle is how we choose to live it. Have a great day, everyone.